Hello, everyone. My name is Jaybird, and welcome back to One Thousand Lies. Without any further ado, let's get right back to where we left off last time, shall we? Right an ending. My thoughts are still scattered when I walk into the hallway, which is empty aside from one infamous person. I've been. Ugh, I burped. I've been waiting for you. How is my favorite guy? <clears throat> Ziva decides to hang out with me whether or not I like it and ask why it took me so long to come out. I brush it off as having to ask a question about the last assignment, but she isn't convinced and keeps pestering me as we walk outside together. Do you want to grab something to eat along the way? You can tell me all about your plans for the for Mysterious Girl X. Sounds good, but I'm still not inviting you to anything. Who's Mysterious Girl X anyways? She sounds like a porn star. Don't play dumb, I'm talking about that girl you stalked yesterday. You still don't know if she sent you that email or not, so you should figure it out. And no, I won't ask you to invite me, although a real gentleman wouldn't although a real gentleman wouldn't re mind paying for a lady's meal. Ossie always pays for my meals, for example. I do admire your ability to take advantage of others, but I can actually control my hormones well enough to take off the white knight armor. Not to mention that Ossie is loaded, so it doesn't matter if he pays for anything. Why do you think I'm even his friend in the first place? The worst part is, coming from you, I'd believe it. While bickering, we reach a small sandwich shop. A small sandwich sh shop that's popular amongst all of the students. We we wait in line, slowly but surely, approaching the window where we'll be able to place our orders. Forget about Aussie for now. You still haven't answered me about that girl X. Poor Aussie. Did he do something to make you angry again? You know what I meant. What are you going to order? I suddenly want to know what weird taste you have, Ziva. Don't change the subject! Talking to you is like a war where the smallest mistake can lead to a total annihilation. To total annihilation, all warfare is based on deception. You should know that. I've already told you too much. The truth is that I'd rather not talk about this, else you might try to make it about psychology. You aren't my public enemy number two for nothing. Two? Who's the first? Anyone who picks Bulbasaur is their starter Pokemon. Oh god damn it! What do you have against Bulbasaur? Bulbasaur is adorable! I love him! Bulbasaur is my favorite. Like, out of all of the starter. N not all of the stories, but all the first three starters, Bulbasaur is the cutest, at least in my opinion. Fuck you, Sheeran. <laughs> I love Bulbasaur! God damn it. <laughs> same, Ziva! Same here! Same here, girl! Same here! Why? He's super cute! No, wait! Stop changing the subject! There's one more thing I want to know about that girl, and then I'll leave you alone. Don't you have an ace up your sleeve? A plan to find out who she is? I tilt my head, deciding whether or not to answer Ziva's question, especially now that she has just reached the top of my public enemy list. <laughs> I can't come up with any reason not to tell her, so I shrug before spilling the beans. I won't do anything about it. I shouldn't have done anything in the first place. In fact, even if I wanted to, I can't do anything 
now. My hands are tied, you know. Nevertheless, I think that you probably want to do something about it. You're always overthinking everything, but you can't lie to me. You're just too embarrassed to admit it, but you don't need to pretend to be a tough guy around me, Enden. Ziva looks down at me. Looks down at me. Confident that I'm an open book to her. It's that smart ass attitude of hers that I hate about her the most. Earlier you mentioned deception. Most people use it improperly. Do you know the difference between lying and deceiving? Don't start with that. It's, this is just another psychoanalysis attempt, isn't it? No, no, I swear it isn't. I'll stick to the, linguisti the linguistic part of it. That was a lie, but since I didn't fall for it, you could say that you failed to deceive me. Good enough for you, miss. You could have skipped the cynicism, but yes, you're right. I wasn't lying, though, you know. That's for the judge to decide. Anyways, hurry and order something. It's your turn. Oh, I didn't notice. Ziva has been distracted and forgot all about the line. She quickly recovers and orders a, vege 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 a vegetarian sandwich. What the fuck was I trying to say? Vege 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 vagina. <laughs> vagina sandwich. <laughs> Ew. The clerk tells us that we'll still have to wait a bit for our food, so Ziva and I, could, and I continue our chat. Oh yeah, and you're one of those veggie freaks. Vegan. The word is vegan. How's the herbivore lifestyle? Do you get extra points for starving yourself more? What prize comes after anemia? Hilarious! First of all, you can still have a healthy diet without meat, for your information. Secondly, it isn't something I do for fun. I take animal rights extremely seriously. You could at least try eating vegetarian meals before you knock them. They aren't bad at all. The clerk brings Eva's food to her, which means it's my turn to place an order now. I'll have... I don't even know what you guys have. Just stuff the, all the meat you can into a sandwich. Enden! Uh, yeah, sorry. That was really insensitive of me. Please. That isn't what I meant. What? I asked politely. Oh, you meant you wanted a bite of my sandwich. Sure, of course I'll share with you. I give up. You're clearly just trying to piss me off. Yep. We leave the shop with our sandwiches in hand. While walking, I ask Ziva if we can stop and sit somewhere together. I exhaustedly plop onto a nearby bench, closing my eyes and relishing in the sweet respite. Ziva looks annoyed and puffs out her cheeks when I look at her. She's not angry, but somehow serious. This is what I meant by the difference between lies and deceit, Endin. You can lie all you want, but deceit always depends on how much the other person trusts you. There's no deceit without a lie, but there are lies without deceit. In this situation, you're both a liar and the deceived. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're still craving a bite of my sandwich. Too bad, girl, you've already missed your chance. I already told you that I don't want it! That has nothing to do with it! How can I make you understand? Ziva folds her arms and racks her brain. Think of a schizophrenic trying to describe reality. To do that, he'd first have to lie to himself about what he's seeing, but he wouldn't be able to deceive himself about what his own reality is presenting. There's no use for him to distinguish between reality and delusion if what he feels is totally different, right? The tone of our conversations usually have... The tone our conversations usually have is gone. It starts feeling more and more like a lecture in that 
pisses me off because we only have 20 minutes off for our break breaks. Time we should be spending forgetting about class. Did you come up with all that crap on your own? Did you steal it from a book? It was me, I guess. It just came to me. Did it sound weird? In short, stop interrupting me! Your behavior is nothing more than a clear-cut example of eternal conflict. There's something you like and feel attracted to, but the closer you get to it, the more negative points about it come to mind, so you want to run away or avoid it somehow. My point is that we won't know what's going to happen until it actually happens. That's why I think you should be brave and get on with it. Between the email and Mysterious Girl X, I'm positive that you want to know more about everything. Instead, you lie to yourself, believing that the situation is just too stupid. The real question is, can you deceive yourself? If you can't, then you won't deceive me either. You aren't convincing anyone. I look at Ziva in disbelief as she continues proudly bragging about her own words. I've come to a conclusion. I was right when I first said that you were lying. You caught me. <laughs> in any case, lies are too demonized in my opinion. Um, oh hey, that's the name of this game! Um... Ziva grins after processing what I just said. In, this, in response, I begin sweating, realizing that I probably just opened Pandora's box. Thankfully, I'm saved by the bell! As I notice a certain someone approaching us. Check it! Check it out! Compañero, Ziva, there you are! I was speaking with some girls from the other side when. Who's this guy? Huh? Me? What do you mean? It's almost like. I know you from somewhere or something. It must have been the work of a witch. I think she chanted a spell, something like, Forget about Aussie. But who's Aussie? Stop twisting my words, Endin. You know that wasn't what I meant. Ha! Whatever, Aussie. What? Whatever. Aussie, what were you saying before? It better be worthwhile. I lost you guys a while ago, and I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, back to what I was trying to say. <clears throat> I forgot. I can't tell if you're only smart when you want to be, or if your brain just doesn't have the capacity for it 24-7. That's exactly why I believed you when you said you're Aussie's friend because of his money. <clears throat> Who wouldn't be? If you go to the other side again, then tell them to bring over your alter ego for... <clears throat> if you go to the other side again, then tell them to bring over your alter ego for a bit. It'd be convenient to have a competent Aussie for once. Unfortunately, I suspect that this is the only Aussie. What did you, what did you expect to get from interrupting me? <clears throat> The other side is our nickname for an, an Ate Institute. It's down the street and directly opposite our school. It was even built from the same blueprint as our school. They probably reused the blueprint to save money. So they're completely the same. Mirrored buildings placed on opposite sides. It's pretty close to here, a little more than 10 minutes walking. A lot of people wonder why they didn't just make one larger school instead of two smaller ones. The funny thing is, is that... The funny thing about it is that... Since the buildings look identical, we joke about or alternate versions of ourselves going to the school there. Like clones or doppelgangers. 
not the other side. Students who have bad grades here are honor students. If someone's fat, then their colon is skinny. Stuff like that. It's an old joke now, but I still find it pretty funny. Oh yeah, I remember what I was going to say. Do you remember that weird email she got? Ziva and I nod simultaneously. Aussie then pulls out his cell phone and, after playing around with it, shows us its screen. Is that another one? When he mentioned the email, I was already expecting this, and looking at the screen only confirms my fear. It's another weird email addressed to me. From Harry H. Mm, yeah. To Sharon Endin. <clears throat> Subject, not for everybody. Can a lie become reality? If you want to know the truth, go find it. This afternoon at the local sports center. Join it. Good luck choosing your first action. I stand there wide-eyed and in disbelief. Ossie pulls, puts his cell away his cell phone and scratches his head in confusion. Do you remember how you used my account, my phone, to check your email the other day? I forgot to log out of your account, and my phone has been logged into it since. To my surprise, earlier today I opened an alert for a new email and it turns out that it was actually for you. And well, that's what I read. Again? What did I do to deserve this? What do you mean? This is perfect! This time I can go with you! I want to know what happens! Me too, it's hysterical enough as a story, but... It's, it's hysterical enough as a story, imagine us getting to watch it live. What? No way! I'm not stupid enough to repeat the same mistake. Once bitten, twice shy. Aren't you curious? After what happened yesterday, we absolutely have to uncover the truth! And you said that what happened yesterday was probably just a misunderstanding anyways. Whoever sent it is giving you a second chance. <clears throat> That's right! What happened to your depressing love story, eh? Are you going to abandon it now? That isn't the problem. What am I supposed to do? I don't even know what they mean by join it. Join what? I'm so excited to go there. Isn't there any way to convince you otherwise? Come on, Ossie, help me! Even as if, if it's with one of those crazy schemes of yours. Crazy schemes, I see, there's no other way. Ossie clicks his tongue in disapproval and sharply gazes at me. I guess we'll have to settle this with a bet. A bet. Hmm. Well, guys. <laughs> This episode's been fun. If you guys like this episode of 1000 Lives, leave a like down below, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, ring that notification bell, and remember, die safely. Bye bye